production function might have the form q is a function of k and l, where q is the units of output, k is the units of capital, and l is the units of labor. A power production function might take the form q equals a times k to the a, l to the b, where a is a constant, and little a and little b are power terms. To illustrate such a relationship, let's suppose that k is equal to 64, l equals 100, big A equals 100, little a equals a third, little b equals a half. And let's work out what the level of output would be. So we're solving for Q. So Q equals 100 times 64 to the third times 100 to the half. That is 100 times 4 times 10 equals 4,000. So 100 units of labor plus 100 units of capital per period yields the firm 4,000 units of output per period. Now let's explore what happens if we change the volume of inputs. Suppose we double inputs. What happens to output? So now we have Q equals 100 times 2K to the third times 2L to the half. Now, by rule of logs, 2k to the third is equal to 2 to the third times k to the third. 2l to the half equals 2 to the half times l to the half. So we can now substitute and say that q equals 100 open the brackets, 2 to the third, k to the third, close the brackets, open the brackets, 2 to the half, l to the half, close the brackets, which gives us 2 to the third times 2 to the half, open the brackets, 100 k to the third, l to the half, close the brackets. Now the term in the brackets is the original level of Q. So the new level of Q that we're trying to work out is the original Q multiplied by two to the five sixths. Now two to the power five over six is 1.78. So let's think about the significance of that. When inputs double, output increases by 1.78 times. That is less than double. So doubling the inputs less than doubles the outputs. We have decreasing returns to scale. If we had constant returns to scale, doubling the inputs would double the output, but it's less than two. So we've got decreasing returns to scale. Now generalizing that, we found this result by doubling the inputs and seeing what happens to the volume of outputs that we get. But determining whether we get increasing, decreasing or constant returns to scale is determined by that power term n. If n is less than 1, as it was in our example, we have decreasing returns. If n equals 1, we have constant returns to scale. If n is greater than 1, we have increasing returns to scale. The returns to scale will be different for different industries because they use different production processes. But as we saw in the gold mining industry, even for different firms within the same industry, 
there can be different relationships between inputs and outputs. The nature of the production process leads to a difference in the nature of the production function. Now let's turn to our case of oil. An estimate has been made for oil pipelines such that Q equals A times H to the 0.37 times K to the 1.73 where Q is oil throughput. A is a constant depending upon the nature of the terrain and the oil type and so on. H is the hydraulic horsepower and K is the size of the pipe. So do we get increasing, decreasing or constant returns to scale given this estimate? Well, the exponents of H and K, when summed, are greater than 1. 0 0.37 plus 1.73 is greater than 1. So the oil pipelines case exhibits increasing returns to scale. That is to say, in general, the larger pipeline and the bigger pumping station is more cost effective. So often when we're looking at production functions, we'll need power terms and the use of the power terms enables us to see the relationship between the volume of inputs and the volume of outputs and enables us to get some idea of the efficiency with which output will increase when inputs are increased.